So, uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the sage of the Odeon Bar, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Howell. Here he is. Since there's no help, come, let us kiss and part. Nay, I have done. You get no more of me, and I am glad, yea, glad with all my heart, that thus so cleanly I myself can free. Shake hands forever, cancel all our vows, and should we meet at any time again, be it not seen in either of our brows that we one trace of former love retain. Now at the last gasp of love's latest breath, when his pulse failing, passion speechless lies, when faith is kneeling by his bed of death, and innocence is closing up his eyes, now if thou wouldst, when all have given him over, from death to life, thou mayst him yet recover. <laughs> or so we shall see, because, uh, with all the teasing, with all the joking about the end, and is it really the end, and so on. An actual, physical, real, in the real world, end had to come at, at some time. And so here we are, on the cusp of the end of the Ask Dr. Hal at Shea Boulay. And not until Chicken returns will there be another show here of this guy. So we must all uh, wish him a safe journey and return. Yes. Now you may know that uh, this show is all based around a very simple concept, an exciting concept, a thrilling concept that shivers the marrow in your bones. And yet, uh, simple with all, as I have said. Yeah. I, uh, there's also one other thing about the show that I'm careful I don't have any insurance. No insurance. So, um, sometimes people catch their hair on fire at this show, a la Michael Jackson. I'm not kidding. Uh, watch out for those candles. Sometimes people fall through the floor because strange holes appear yeah. in the substrate. Uh, economy measures in constructing the floor have led to this... Uh, I hired Chris Carney to build this floor. Not said. Yeah, okay. yeah. And we all know how uh, satisfactory that is. That's me. You. 20 years ago. Not to belabor the obvious. I'm not starting the show until you turn the K-Rob light on. There you go. That's what it is. The snails on the horn. Mornings at 7. Ladies and gentlemen, Oops is here. Yes, Oops has made a return after years. He used to come to our ancient show, the ancient times. He was there every week at the Odeon. He asked a question that was 75 feet long. He's done an entire said. stack of these things and taped them together and made them as long as the bar. Then he wrote really small. And it took yeah. 45 minutes to ask the question. Yes. And by the time we were done, everybody had fallen asleep. He wrote really all right, let's, uh, let's have a question. I, I'm not, I don't recall. I don't think we've answered one yet. No, no, we're still stalling. It's the stuff. We're trying to get the audience to invest. You know what I mean? So that we can hang on to them until, until 9 o'clock in the morning. Because we really we have a lot of work to do. And before we actually ask the first question, I'm going to read the Great Gatsby. Quick. <laughs> I hope you're going to read it aloud. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, here we are. I got the first question here. <laughs> All right. Hey Rob, will you quit fucking around? In just a moment, here Rob, San Francisco, will be providing serious music, and here it is. Okay. What is the name of that movie with Chevy Chase and Demi Moore that reminds me of this set? <laughs> hmm, the movie with the Chevy Chase and uh, Demi Moore that, um, the access in the room. The movie you're talking about is called Nothing But Trouble. Oh, yeah! 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 And it features 
Dan Aykroyd as an elderly decaying judge with a penis for a nose. Thank you. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, we must suspend operations because Frank Chu is among us. Let's hear what Frank Chu has to say. Well, I had a chance to meet uh, former U.S. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, and um, also lately I had a chance to talk to Nancy Pelosi. So I had a chance to tell them about my campaigns, uh, about myself as the movie star, and about those populations and the other galaxies, and also the. ABC, CBS Evening News, they were already able to film me uh, about Bush and Cheney involved with those populations at 12 galaxies that were guilty of the impeachments, but not paying me, me as that movie star, that TV star. So I think uh, 2010 or 2012, try to get that impeachments and get it all proven in Washington, D.C. too. Frank two, ladies and gentlemen. Millions of years ago, dinosaurs yes. roamed the earth. I've got a dinosaur question right here. For uh, I, I just wanted to ask that. Uh, yes. As long as we don't exhaust the food supply, we too can be big. <laughs> I've heard that there was a dinosaur who was thought to have two brains. No. One in his head. And one in his ass. What might a prehistoric creature have done with a brain in his ass? Could present day creatures benefit from this feature? <laughs> you mean if they also had a secondary <laughs> brain? Well, let's uh, examine this proposition. Uh, this is uh, something which is often said of the uh, prehistoric Stegosaurus, an Ornithischian thyreophorian dinosaur of the Jurassic Age, which famously had a large, an enlarged glycogen body in its uh, hips, in its spinal axis, uh, to help the task of moving the legs and the tail, since the head was tiny, far away, and had an extremely insignificant brain. Uh, an editorial columnist for the Chicago Tribune, Bert Leston Taylor, once wrote these words. Behold the mighty dinosaur, famous in prehistoric lore, not only for his power and strength, but for his intellectual length. You will observe by these remains, the creature had two sets of brains, one in his head, the usual place, the other, at his spinal base. Thus he could reason a priori as well as a posteriori. If something slipped, the forward mind was rescued by the one behind. As he thought twice before he spoke, he had no judgment to revoke. Thus he could think without congestion on both sides of either question, and so on and so on. But uh, it wasn't a brain, it was an enlarged sacral nerve plexus. Uh, it helped move the rear legs and the tail, and this poor thing needed all the help it could get for that. But its brain was not that ludicrous, I have to say, because uh, it is in the appropriate size range for a reptile of that size, once one does the calculations. Uh, so I hate to puncture this uh, famous old uh, superstition that dinosaurs had two brains, but uh, they didn't, and many living animals also have this enlarged uh, sacral plexus, uh, because it's useful, and nature likes to do things that are useful and prune out what is not. The Stegosaurus lived an enormous length of time, time which is greater than that in which humans will inhabit the Earth. So who's got the last laugh, eh? That's what I want to know.